Concord is Sony's newest live service game for the PlayStation 5 and PC, or as I like to call it, Sony's newest punching bag. Of course, Concord has had mixed reception online. It's yet another live service game, one we probably don't need, so people are going to love it or hate it. Now, I'll admit I wasn't a fan of Concord when it was first announced, but 2023 was a rough year for PlayStation. It had been a long time since we had a proper PlayStation showcase, and when two of its announcements were live service games, it didn't take much for me to roll my eyes. Not only did we have zero information on the game within its generic CGI trailer, but there's also too many live service games on the market today, to the point where it's all becoming too much. We see more of these games fail than we do succeed. Yet, at the same time, I think everyone has and maybe even needs that live service game they can always go back to. Whether that be Apex Legends, Fall Guys, Fortnite, Whatever it is, with so many options out there, there's bound to be something. And for me, Concord has become that very game. So when more was revealed, I was suddenly interested and wanted to give Concord a chance. I pre-ordered the game, received codes for the beta, and had a surprisingly good time playing with my partner. I've never been the biggest fan of first-person games and online games even less. There are very few I've really dived into and enjoyed, and it seems as time goes on it's less and less. Concord is both of those things, and I think I enjoy it so much because of my nostalgia of online PlayStation 3 games. Concord has those classic game modes, enclosed maps, and simple 5v5 matches. No battle royales, no massive number of players on screen, Concord may be long past the popularity of the hero shooter boom of the mid to late 2010s, but it's a game that goes against what is popular and regurgitated today, and that has major appeal for me. Concord follows the crew of the North Star, a group of guns for hire taking on various jobs. Each game mode has a different objective, with one squad going against another with the same goal. So if players click Brawl, the game will either give you Takedown, which is your classic team deathmatch and doesn't need any explanation, or Brawl will give you Trophy Hunt. Every kill leaves behind bounty cards that need to be collected. Once a team collects 30, the round is over. I see these two modes being the most popular to play in the future. Next is Overrun, where the goal is to capture and defend objectives from rivals. Included is Area Control, another classic where a number of zones need to be captured and defended. Meanwhile, in Signal Chase, crews are fighting to capture only one zone until it moves. It's challenging, but isn't quite my favorite. Then we get to Rivalry, which unlocks at level 6. These are games that feature no respawn whatsoever. This includes Cargo Run, where cargo is planted in a zone and must be defended from rivals. It's a round-based mode, so if you die, you need to wait until the next round to come back. And then there's Clash Point, where a single zone appears in the middle of the map. Rounds are won by either securing the zone or eliminating the rival crew. The other modes are great, but it's clear that rivalry is what Concord was made for, especially when it comes to the crew you build because if you die, that character is no longer available. So your crew is important, but we'll get to that in a bit. I wasn't able to play rivalry in time for this video. When I tried to play, people weren't playing. I'm assuming with the 72 hour early access, most people didn't unlock it at the time, so I wasn't able to play it for this review. Rivalry sounds like we're the best of the best come to play. In a way, Concord's ranked mode. As someone who puts himself out there and tries and dies a lot, I have a feeling I wouldn't be the best at this, but I am eager to try this mode once more people are playing. But if I want to get better and test my skills and learn how to better play, there's a practice range and basic training. And for a challenge, there are solo time trials. Really, this is more for self-pride as you're trying to get the best time on the leaderboards. It has a benefit in learning to be fast and hitting targets, but wasn't ever something I found myself going back to in comparison to those main modes. With clear Guardians of the Galaxy and 1970s sci-fi themes and influences, the game launches with 16 playable characters with more coming in the future. 
It feels like a lot, but this all makes sense once you dive into the game. Characters are divided into class types and can be customized. Outfits, weapon skins, accessories, and charms. A lot to unlock to make your free gunner as unique as can be. Nothing I really found to be outstanding, but the starting options are decent. Of course, characters have their own abilities. One of my favorites, Haymar, can create a wall of fire in whatever direction I throw it in, and if an enemy gets caught, chunks of health are quickly depleted. Meanwhile, Starchild is a big guy, and uses this to his advantage by charging into other players or power slamming for an attack. Every character is different, and it's fun to discover how each works. Now, if you really want to succeed in Concord, you need to play as multiple characters in a match. I'm not saying, hey, go out and die right away, but dying is actually beneficial. Characters have crew bonuses, like longer weapon range, faster reload speed, improved weapon recoil, and increased healing. Character classes do share the same bonuses, but it's a brilliant way of trying out new characters, so if you die, you get that perk on respawn. Typically, I prefer to get faster reloading and improved mobility out of the way. To me, being faster is best, but ultimately my goal is to get every perk there is. It may not make a difference in winning, but it greatly enhances the experience. When it comes to the characters themselves, I think very few stand out. Everyone fits into the world of Concord's design, but a lot of the characters end up being forgettable. I typically like playing as Tio, Haymar, and Kips, but Duchess surprised me. I wasn't expecting someone of her age in the game, but it's a cool inclusion. It's unexpected, and Duchess is awesome. She can build walls where enemies can't go through, but your team can. Definitely useful in heated battles, and not a character to be missed. However, what sets Concord apart is the crew builder. With 16 characters and different character variations, building your crew for each game type is key. Currently, Crew Builder has little effect, but once more characters and variants are added, this will become beneficial. I would say my biggest complaint are the lack of character interactions. Show us their personalities because, for the most part, they're pretty damn quiet. In Apex Legends, characters are talking all the time. Reloading, getting shot, getting kills, being around certain characters, they respond in some way. All this talk shows us who they are. While Concord delivers new, cinematic episodes every week to show us the ongoings of the crew, I feel like more could be done. I also think victory poses and defeat poses could have some movement instead of being still. This is a game about the characters, so show us just that. The big question is how successful will Concord be in the long run? I see myself playing it for a long while, and I have no doubt it will garner a passionate fanbase. The developers have a clear layout for future seasons and content, and I do believe they can deliver. I just hope it doesn't become a Destruction All-Star situation, where content is promised, partially delivered, and then the game is abandoned. I don't see this happening, but really, who knows? I wonder if the lack of a free-to-play model could affect the game. The people who are interested in Concord are the ones buying into it. Could a low player count prompt Sony to release a free-to-play version? Maybe. There's an added benefit of future content being free because it's not free-to-play. Every character, map, mode, every update makes me appreciate not having to pay extra for overpriced content. There's already so much to unlock simply by playing and leveling up. Concord is following that Helldivers 2 approach, which I think is wise. It may be bad this isn't free to play and may harm the game, but I think the benefits outweigh the negatives. I never feel like I have to be the best player in Concord, I just need to put myself out there and help contribute to the success of my team. Playing by yourself with strangers is fun, but if you can grab a friend or more to play, I think that's the best way to go. Concord isn't revolutionary, it isn't going to reinvent live service games, and it doesn't need to. What it does, it excels at. There's a high level of polish, and it's clear how passionate the developers were in making this. Like any game out there, Concord isn't for everyone, and that's important to remember. Those are my thoughts on the game, but what do you think of Concord? 
Will you be playing or is it just not a game for you? Let us know down in the comments. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified on future content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.